The film begins by showing a fight between a young man, Edward Elric, who wears a red coat, against a priest named Cornello. The scene then switches to Edward and his younger brother, Alphonse Elric, when they were kids. At that time, they lived in the rural town of Resemble with their mother, Tricia Elric, while self-learning alchemy at a young age. Edward and Alphonse were pretty good at alchemy and always showed their experiments to their mother, who was always proud of her sons. One day, Edward created something using alchemy that they learned self-taught. They rushed to show their intentions to their mother, who was drying clothes in the yard. So proud of her sons, Tricia approached them, saying she loved them so much. When Edward and Alphonse were about to leave to play, their mother suddenly collapsed unconscious and died mysteriously. They looked so sad and devastated after their mother's death. They thought of raising their mother from the dead, even though they knew that raising someone from the dead or creating an artificial human was prohibited. Nevertheless, the Elric brothers seemed determined to raise their mother from the dead by conducting human transmutation experiments. They then collected the materials of alchemists in secret and drew alchemical formations on the floor of their house to begin the ritual. However, when they committed the taboo act of human transmutation to resurrect their mother after she died, it backfired, and they had to face the consequences through the law of equivalent exchange. The scene turns to the present, where Edward, who has grown up, is fighting against Father Cornello, whom he believes is using a philosopher's stone to recruit the people of Riol. Edward seemed overwhelmed by the attacks of Cornello's monsters. But then, Alphonse, who was wearing the armor, came to help him. Shortly after, Alphonse defeated Cornello's monsters, while Edward cornered Cornello, who tried to escape into the crowd and held a woman hostage. Edward then revealed to all citizens that Cornello was a fake priest who used religion as a cover to gather followers. He planned to create an army of religious fanatics big enough to overthrow the Amstrian government and place him as the country's ruler. After saving the woman, Edward and Cornello returned in a fierce fight until Edward's superior, Colonel Roy Mustang, finally arrived to handle the situation personally. Mustang ordered his men to capture Cornello and secure Edward while he took Cornello's Philosopher's Stone. Mustang then destroyed the stone, signaling that the Philosopher's Stone belonged to Cornello and was just an imitation. It was not the real Philosopher's Stone Edward had been searching for. Seeing that, Edward and Alphonse were disappointed that their efforts were no longer fruitful. Unexpectedly, Cornello managed to get away from Mustang's men. While Mustang ordered the men to take Edward to the base for questioning, three men in black had secretly observed Edward and Cornello's fight. Meanwhile, Alphonse used his alchemist power to repair roads and buildings damaged by Edward and Cornello's fight. Because of his actions, Alphonse received praise from the residents, who thanked him because Alphonse had fixed everything. Shortly after, a girl named Winry Rockbell arrived at the place and immediately hugged Alphonse as she asked him where Edward was. Alphonse told her that Colonel Mustang's men took Edward to the base for questioning. Upon arrival at the state alchemist headquarters in East City, Mustang interrogated Edward and scolded him for being so obsessed with the Philosopher's Stone. Edward then explained that he wanted to get the Philosopher's Stone not to increase his strength as a state alchemist but rather to research a means of restoring Alphonse's body. Mustang seemed sympathetic to Edward, who was willing to do everything he could to restore Alphonse's body to its original state. But Mustang assumed that he was too obsessed with the power of the Philosopher's Stone, ignoring other ways Alphonse might be able to restore the body without using the Philosopher's Stone. In the middle of their conversation, Captain Meese Hughes suddenly entered the room and warmly greeted Edward. He didn't come alone because General Hakuro showed behind him to see Edward. General Hakuro shook Edward's hand while praising him, who became the youngest state alchemist in history by achieving his certification at age 12. Afterward, Edward and Captain Hughes engaged in a discussion, in which Hughes invited Edward and Alphonse to dinner at his house. At the same time, Winry, who had just arrived at the base, approached Edward and looked upset because he had damaged his automail prosthetic right arm crafted by her. She scolded him, but the two got into a fight instead. Elsewhere, Cornello secretly met three men dressed in black who were previously observing Cornello and Edward's fight. The three people represented the sins, lust, envy, and gluttony. After his defeat, Cornello rushed to lust, who had given him the stone in the first place. As Cornello had outlived his usefulness to the sins, lust killed him, and the corpse was eaten by gluttony. After which, Cornello was imitated and effectively replaced by Envy, who planned to stir the townspeople to war. In the evening, Edward, Alphonse, and Winry fulfill Captain Hugh's dinner invitation at his house. They met his pregnant wife, who greeted them warmly and engaged in a pleasant discussion. The scene then turns around Edward, who was dreaming of events in the past when he and Alphonse failed to perform the taboo act of human transmutation to resurrect their mother. After the tragedy, Edward lost his right arm and left leg. Meanwhile, Alphonse lost his entire physical being taken away and existed solely as a soul alchemically bound to a giant suit of steel armor. The next day, General Hakura ordered Mustang to bring Edward, Alphonse, and Winry to meet Shotucker, a bioalchemy authority who obtained his state alchemist credentials by creating a talking chimera. Upon arrival at Tucker's house, they met his young daughter, Nina, and her pet dog, Alexander. Alphonse and Winry immediately became good friends with Nina and invited her to play together while Edward had a serious conversation with Tucker. 
Edward then told him about a tragedy in the past that caused Alphonse to lose his physical body while he lost his limbs. Upon hearing that, Tucker became sympathetic to Edward and decided to help them. He then suggested that Edward find Dr. Tim Marco, as he created a philosopher's stone before going into hiding. Tucker got information that Marco disappeared last year, but someone saw that guy in Barnes City not long ago. While Edward and Winry headed to Marco's last known whereabouts in Barnes, Alphonse remained behind to be examined by Tucker. On the way to Barnes Town, Edward looked down on Alphonse's worries, and this was his first time traveling somewhere unaccompanied by Alphonse. Winry, who realized that Edward was worried about his brother, then tried to cheer him up by saying that one day, Edward would be able to return Alphonse's body to its original state. They then talked about Nina and felt sorry for the little girl because she was always lonely while her father was too busy with his work. After a train ride, Edward and Winry finally arrived at Barnes and asked a local about Marco's whereabouts. They finally got his address, and he changed his name to Moro to hide his identity. When they arrived at Marco's house, Edward and Winry were startled by Marco pointing a gun at them. He assumed they intended to take him to the state military for questioning. Edward tried convincing him that they just wanted to talk, but Marco did not believe his words, so Edward was forced to disarm his gun and accidentally knocked Marco out. After Marco regained consciousness, Edward asked about the existence of the Philosopher's Stone. When Marco was about to say something, suddenly, he noticed someone's presence and immediately fired at the door. Shortly after that, Lust appeared and immediately used her power to take down Edward and Winry while she tried to kill Marco. After rendering Marco helpless, Lust suddenly disappeared. Edward rushed to Marco, trying to help him. Knowing that he wouldn't live much longer, Marco gave the transmutation circle to Edward while mentioning a place called Laboratory No. 5. Marco eventually died after passing on the information. Edward then rushed back to Tucker's house. Winry stayed at Barnes to take care of Marco's funeral. Edward arrived at Tucker's house and found him talking to his new chimera. Tucker then told Edward that he had created a chimera that could speak smoothly. However, Edward discovered that Tucker fused his daughter, Nina, with her pet dog, Alexander, to maintain his position as state alchemist. Not only that, but Edward also discovered that the first talking chimera was Tucker's wife fused with another animal. Upon learning that, Edward became very angry and beat Tucker up. Shortly after, Alphonse arrived and stopped Edward before he killed Tucker. After receiving a report from Edward, Mustang and his men rushed to Tucker's house to arrest him and revoke his license as a state alchemist. As he left for prison, Tucker expressed remorselessness for his actions while justifying them from a scientific point of view and leaving a mortified Edward with a painful lesson. After the incident, Edward locked himself in the library for days to find information about the transmutation circle of Marco's legacy and the location of Laboratory No. 5. Hughes, worried about Edward's health, came to see him with Lieutenant Maria Ross, who brought food for him. Hughes and Ross then helped Edward to find information about the transmutation circle and Laboratory No. 5. Ross said that Marco used to work for the state military as a researcher and was placed in Laboratory No. 3, while they only had four laboratories. Edward then said something about Lust, the mysterious woman who killed Marco, and believed that Lust was not human. In addition, Edward assumed that someone in the state military might be involved in the murder of Marco and have the ambition to find the Philosopher's Stone, just like him. Shortly after, General Hakuro approached them and said that the location of Laboratory No. 5 turned out to be the long-abandoned cannery. After getting this information, Edward rushed to the place. At the same time, one of the soldiers went to General Hakuro and told him of the riots in Riol. Edward headed to the cannery, accompanied by Alphonse and Winry. Upon arrival at the site, they found no clue as to the whereabouts of Laboratory No. 5. Realizing that they didn't find anything in the place, Alphonse felt disappointed and questioned whether Edward could fulfill his promise to restore his physical body. Edward, who heard that, was then irritated, and they got into an argument that led to a fight. Winry tried to stop and told Alphonse that Edward cared very much for him, even willing to sacrifice. Meanwhile, in the library, Captain Hughes managed to find a clue that led to the location of Laboratory No. 5, which was once a prisoner of war camp. Hughes was about to inform Colonel Mustang of the location of Lab No. 5, but suddenly Lust showed up and attacked Hughes. Despite being severely injured by the Lust attack, Hughes escaped from her after waging a crippling fight against Lust. Hughes rushed to the payphone to contact Mustang, but unexpectedly, Mustang turned behind Hughes and fired at him, killing him. In the meantime, Edward was about to leave the cannery. He was suddenly shocked by the arrival of several soldiers who were ordered to take him back to the base. While Edward was away with the soldiers, Winry and Alphonse were watched by someone from behind. Upon arrival at the base, Edward was locked up with Lieutenant Reza Hawkeye, who informed him that Captain Hughes had been killed by Colonel Mustang. Hawkeye also told Edward that Tucker got away. Upon hearing that, Edward assumed that Colonel Mustang might have freed Tucker. Hawkeye and Edward then tried to escape by attacking the guards and rushing to Laboratory No. 5. At the same time, Mustang arrived at the prisoner of war camp that used to be used as Laboratory No. 5. When entering the tunnel, Mustang was intercepted by Lieutenant Ross and the guards. Shortly, Edward and Hawkeye arrived at the scene and were about to capture their colonel. Surprisingly, Mustang instead used his flame-based alchemy to burn Lieutenant Ross in front of Edward and the others. 
Mustaine then revealed that the woman in front of him was not the real Lieutenant Ross but the imposter. As his cover was announced, the fake Lieutenant Ross finally told her real identity, none other than Envy, an artificial human or the homunculi. Shortly afterward, Lust and Gluttony arrived at the scene, and Edward soon realized that the mysterious woman who killed Marco was Lust. Later, Lust revealed they were planning to frame Mustang and Hughes' murder to get Mustang out of state military. Envy impersonated Mustang and killed Hughes to make Mustang a suspect in the murder. Hawkeye then asked if Lust had released Tucker from prison, but Lust denied it and ordered Envy to find where Tucker was. Because their plan was revealed, Lust tried to kill Hawkeye. However, Mustang was first in front of Hawkeye and received the attack to protect his comrade. Assuming that Mustang's life won't be long, Lust hurried away from the place with Gluttony. While Mustang was trying to stop the bleeding from his wounds, Edward rushed after Lust and Gluttony to stop whatever they were planning. Edward finally arrived at Lab Number 5 and was very surprised to find Alphonse and Winry, who had been taken hostage by Tucker. Edward removed his automail prosthetic right arm at Tucker's orders because he threatened to kill Winry. Tucker then showed the real Philosopher's Stone to Edward. Not just one, but many Philosopher's Stones were stored in Laboratory Number 5. He revealed that Marco and the researchers in the state military were experimenting with creating the Philosopher's Stone at the expense of the prisoners of war. Upon learning that, Edward became very shocked and had no idea that the Philosopher's Stone was created from human life. Tucker was about to kill Edward when Lust got there. She immediately killed Tucker. Mustang and Hawkeye also arrived at the lab to help Edward, who was shocked to see Tucker was killed by Lust. Edward thought Tucker and Lust were working together, but the opposite happened. Lust turned towards the door as if she knew someone was there. Shortly afterward, Edward and the others were shocked by the appearance of General Hakuro, who revealed that he was the mastermind behind all this. General Hakuro wanted to rule the world by creating an army of artificial humans or homunculi. He deliberately used Tucker and Edward to find the Philosopher's Stone to raise the mannequin soldier's homunculi hanging over the ceiling of Laboratory No. 5. Without a second thought, Hakuro instantly activated the machine to channel the power of the Philosopher's Stone to the mannequin soldiers, giving life to them. However, his plan did not go as he wanted because the mannequin soldiers turned out to be uncontrollable by anyone, and instead attacked Hakuro, eating him alive. Mustang tried to burn the mannequin soldiers with his flame-based alchemy. He immediately learned their weaknesses. Mustang then ordered Hawkeye to exit the lab and warned the soldiers to kill the mannequin soldiers by aiming at their heads while he chased after lust and envy, trying to escape. On the other hand, Edward managed to save Alphonse and Winry and asked Alphonse to create a barricade so that the mannequin soldiers could not leave the lab, while Lust ordered Gluttony to eat the mannequin soldiers inside the lab. Mustang managed to catch up with Lust and Envy, who had been outside the lab and then used his flame-based alchemy to burn Envy. Seeing that, Lust immediately attacked Mustang, but the attack was broken by Edward. Edward soon realized that Envy was recovering itself longer than ever before, which implied that homunculi like Envy could be destroyed and die like normal humans. Mustang and Edward then planned to kill Envy first by burning him. After defeating Envy, they also worked together to kill Lust and rip her Philosopher's Stone core from her body. Afterward, Mustang gave Edward the stone so he could restore Alphonse. However, Edward instead used it to appear before his brother's body in Truthgate. He promises to find another way to revive him. Edward then returned to reality to reaffirm Alphonse's existence and physical body. He then went home by train with Winry and Alphonse. Seeing Alphonse, who looked cheerful while playing cards with Winry, Edward promised in his heart that he would find another way to restore Alphonse's body without using the Philosopher's Stone. The moral value of this story is to remain a human being who has a conscience and cares for others even though many precious things in life are lost. Hard in the motherfucking paint, nigga.